afternoon. Um, this session is uh, UI in a Unix world. And I am Tom Larkin from Jamf Software. I'm a senior technical account manager in the Bay Area of California. And uh, with me is Art Sokol from Salesforce, senior client engineer. And without further ado, thank you. Testing. Cool. How's everybody doing? Good? Good. Have a good time? So uh, this was a, a favor. <laughs> There's an inside joke. Ask about it later. <laughs> but um, I'm Arik Sokol, so uh, I actually uh, worked at Genentech for almost 12 years prior to starting at Salesforce just about a month ago. So yeah, I've got a lot of experience with the big biotech, and now I'm new into the high tech, which is uh, very exciting in itself. It's a different beast for sure. And um, I'm going to talk about UI in a Unix world. Uh, visual experiences, uh, pulling customers in, user interaction, the things that uh, kind of give us visibility, IT, user, IT uh, engineers, visibility to the end user, to uh, executives, to everyone else. Because they don't see all the magic we do in the, in the background with scripts and things like that. So, I want to do a little more focus on how we can leverage that, how we can get you noticed in your environments. And I'm also a community leader. Uh, Andrew Sego and I started a local uh, Mac, MacBrain uh, org in San Francisco Bay Area. So if you're anywhere in the Bay Area, uh, we meet up once a month, uh, share knowledge, have speakers. Uh, so we definitely uh, want to give back to our local communities as, as well as to the greater uh, Jamf Nation community. And special thanks to my, uh, my buddy, Andrew Sego, who should be around here somewhere, maybe. Uh, and uh, Zach Smith, uh, I've worked with over the, over the years as well. Uh, we've collaborated on a lot of different things that you'll see, um, and wanted to definitely uh, give some shout outs to them. And I wish I could grow a beard like them, because, uh, yeah, it just doesn't grow. So UI in a Unix world, um, I, we're going to start with uh, talking about how you can make your product shine. So uh, a lot of opportunities to, to, to get noticed. And how you can do it with some of the tools inside of EOS within the Casper suite. Um, and then some of the tools outside, uh, what's out there. And then if you're crazy enough to want to delve into Xcode and create your own Coco interfaces, talk a little bit about creating and how you can leverage that uh, in Casper, as well as uh, integrating it with solutions uh, that are local to your needs. And uh, by the end of the day, you're going to learn how to do one, make one of these. It's the most complex uh, Apple script ever. Actually, no. So making it shine. As you probably know, we have a bunch of uh, you know, security stacks in our environments. We have tools that we run. And you, the focus on UI isn't that great from our vendors most of the time. So the truth be told, it sucks. So let's take control. You know, users always remember the, the crappy experience, like that nagging pop-up that keeps telling me I need to install a security patch or whatever, and it just looks gross, and I, I have nightmares about it. I think about it all the time. So there's opportunities where we can actually help improve user experience, make, make the Mac fun, make it interesting, make people want to use it more. And you know, our customers, they don't know what a script is. They don't care what a script is. They don't know what magic you're doing in the background, because you know there's a ton of effort and knowledge that you put into creating that script that's doing something magical, uh, saving them time, saving you time, saving the organization money. And it's an opportunity for you to get noticed. Uh, visibility you know, helps you get promoted, helps you go into positions and things that you really want to uh, aspire to. Uh, and getting that visibility, if say, oh, I created this Apple script with this nice little GUI that they run and they think is an application that you wrote, and the CEO is using it 
constantly and says, oh, who, who created this? This is awesome. Well, you know, your name is now tied to something that's, that they can touch and feel and see. So some of the tools that uh, are available inside. Uh, how many of you have used Jamf Helper? Quite a few. Uh, and it's nicely hidden deep inside. Uh, and you know it's kind of always fun trying to call it and, and make it do things. But it's really easy to use. Uh, it's pretty simple. There's not too many options of what it can do, right? Keeps it pretty limited. Um, it's part of the Casper suite, so if something breaks about it, you can call Tom or whoever else is your account uh, person and say, hey, you guys got to fix this. I'm relying on this for, for production-related things. Um, and it's got really cool different types of uh, UI interfaces that it interacts with. So it gives you like a utility view, a HUD view, uh, and also like full screen lockdown kind of views which are helpful when you're uh, setting up uh, accounts or imaging or something like that where you don't want user interaction. And simple uh, interaction with uh, exit codes. So if, if someone clicks a certain button or they select a certain option, uh, you can, within your own logic, uh, say, do this, do that, uh, if this, do that, uh, which is really nice. Uh, not so complex with Jamf Helper, it's pretty easy. Works, but it's a little limited. There's other cool tools out there, too. So don't limit yourself to just uh, supported stuff. There's a lot of open source stuff that's been around for, for ages and uh, works great. But let's look at the window type. So these are kind of the general views that you have, HUD view, utility, uh, and full, full screen. Uh, and it's as simple as just calling the Jamf helper binary and telling it a window type, a description, uh, pass to an icon. If you want it you know, to seem like Safari is asking him to do something, you can do that. Um, it's, it's very simple, very easy to call. Uh, this could be done via a policy. I wouldn't recommend putting it into an extension attribute because that thing will just sit there until <laughs> there's interaction if there's a button. Um, but there's a, a lot of different ways that you can leverage this. And then uh, show delay options. So the does do a pull down that gives you options to, uh, based on a certain option, trigger an, another event or trigger another workflow. Uh, whether you're Apple scripting, whether you're using Shell, Bash, Python, whatever your flavor is, um, you can call these uh, commands and actually get some user interaction with your, with your scripts. Example what that would look like. Who wants the latest version of Java? So with the return values, um, they kind of are spelled out for you. So you can actually say, if the result is this, do that. Uh, so these are the, the, the select few of results that the Jam Helper provides uh, to allow you to get interaction. And have you guys, uh, you guys know what echo dollar sign question mark does? Yeah, so it, what it does is actually, it, I, I use this all the time, no matter what I use, is in any script, you basically call whatever, if you run a command, whatever that exit, exit code is, you have that value and you can do an if statement saying, if it's 247, do this. And you know what 247 is, it's maybe they clicked the OK button. Um, it allows you to do a lot of complex uh, scripts uh, and integrate and make it really user interactive, where it's a really functional tool. So the other tool inside, AppleScript, show of hands, who uses AppleScript? Quite a few. Uh, great custom workflows. Um, uh, that's what I use it for is it's a great framework. Uh, whether I have 50 sh uh, bash scripts that are doing various things, AppleScript can keep it all controlled. Uh, and it gives you that app feel. Because it acts like an application. Um, it's kind of like something that you have full flexibility in and you can integrate and do things, say open application, open the package, uh, show this dialogue, show this alert, uh, ask for something, um, trigger other scripts. It could, you can just have a simple Apple script that lists all the scripts of actions that you need to do and then you let those scripts handle it. Uh, and then you can store more secure things in your Apple script because when you compile it, uh, no one will really have access to the data that easily. 
Uh, but those other scripts, the shell scripts that are underneath, you can ed edit them anytime. So if you make a change in your environment that you just need to quickly uh, update a URL or server address, you do it on, your shell, on the shell script within the Apple script, and voila, it, it's updated without having to reopen the whole thing and redo it. So some, uh, some examples. Uh, one is a little background on this, on this tool. Uh, we had an issue where we have this uh, document repository uh, web thing uh, that I think it's SharePoint backend. Uh, and the challenge was there's so many different URLs uh, that it bounces around. So if, let's say I sign in to my, to my uh, engineering group and I'm working on a document and then I click a link in there and it takes me to another document. Well, that document, it may not be in the same server. So it's similar a URL, but it's slightly different enough where it forces me to re-authenticate. And we're looking at, you know, we're talking a big global environment where we have multiple, multiple active directories. Not everyone is provisioned everywhere. Uh, the user experiences are different. So if you're, our challenge was, because uh, this is uh, when, when we, when I was working at Genentech and uh, working, uh, Roche came in and we were integrating and, and growing our environments, the people uh, on the other side at Roche uh, had no, no issues, right? Because they authenticated once, uh, it's the same domain, their, their Macs are bound to the, their Active Directory, so it, it just flows cleanly. Uh, for us, accessing those systems is just log in and then log in again and then log in again. So, this was a way to create a, a quick and easy win to make it usable for people out here uh, trying to uh, collaborate with those at Roche. And so what it did is basically prompts you for basic uh, minimal information. Uh, what are your user credentials? <laughs> and does the rest. Uh, what it does is it just uses uh, security commands to create uh, keychain items with, for the specific URLs, with the appropriate access, which browser that it should be used as, uh, and allows you to pre-store all the different servers that are potentially out there. Uh, I guess the challenge with this is if there's more servers added, or new URLs are added, you have to maintain this application. Uh, but it gave an opportunity uh, via self-service for a user to click, install this app, which launches locally, uh, and then basically just do this once per year when they change their password to synchronize all those sites. Um, there are some challenges. 10.8 has a lot of additional security, which then prompts you saying, are, are you sure you want to allow this? So you do get that sometimes uh, with this. It was one downfall. Uh, but it's a little bit of pain to get a lot of uh, comfort in the long run. So this is kind of from a UI perspective uh, in AppleScript, uh, display alerts, display uh, dialog are the ways that you can present uh, information to users. So basically all it, all it looked like was this. So they saw this icon in their utilities folder, they double click it, it's like an app, it feels like an app. They, uh, they read it, they say, oh, I gotta do this uh, to, the, to update and hit continue to start. And then it sends you through a workflow of all right, enter your corporate user ID. And then, okay, is, is, is this you? Did you type it in right? And then enter your corporate password. And you could do a local auth if you're on the network. You can check, do a local auth to see if that password is valid if you're bound to Active Directory. Um, or you can have them type it in one more time and do a quick verify. You have all these different options. Um, and then if, in this case, it did a verify. So it noticed that the, uh, the passwords didn't match, so it can allow, allow you to go back and throw another dialog uh, and allow them to continue without exiting out in this weird state. And then when they're done, it's complete and it says, hey, next time you change your password, run this again to make sure that it's all synchronized. So simple tool, it doesn't really do much, but for an end user, it's awesome. Like, it's just saved them probably an hour each day of having to re-authenticate, um, and a quick, easy one. So another example um, of AppleScript is this utility uh, called ShareMounter. So this is kind of along the same lines where we have multiple ADs, uh, different domains, um, and whenever you're trying to mount shares, uh, 
in a different site uh, because your, your current Mac is bound to your local site, right? So when you're trying to access another site, at, there's a bug with Apple that they're gonna release at some point that's gonna fix this that will allow you to uh, send the appropriate domain information. So that didn't actually happen automatically, so we created our own uh, share mounter, which asked for simple information, uh, only what's really necessary, uh, easy user interaction. It purpose is, purpose is just to mount this SMB share. And it supports the multi-domains, like I mentioned. And it looked like this. So it just asked for your username, your password, what domain you're in, uh, and then what's the share that you're trying to mount. And simple as that, it just pulls down domain to domain, domain user to domain user, share pass to pass, password, uh, and path to path, and allows you to, with one click, mount your share. Pretty simple, nothing too crazy. Do you guys build anything like, like these kind of apps? It's useful. Then the other, uh, <laughs> my favorite tool, HyperCard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that was, uh, that's what I learned programming on. It was fun when I was a kid, uh, but rest in peace. Too bad we can't integrate with that anymore. So some of the tools uh, outside. Uh, Coco Dialog users, hands. I'm surprised there's not more, really? One of the coolest uh, UI tools, most flexible things I've, I've worked with. Has been updated in a while, but uh, got to give credit, credit to Mark uh, for creating this thing that, that makes our lives so much easier. So it's fully customizable dialogues, lets you create any kind of dialogue you can imagine. Uh, you'll see some dialogues in a, in, a, in a second of what's possible. It integrates response triggers, so kind of like with uh, Jamf Helper, where based on a response, you can put, depending on what scripting language you're using, uh, statements to say, do this, do that, uh, and make it really uh, deep and dense and, and actually accomplish a lot of things. Gives you progress bars. Those are great. People, users like to see progress bars. They don't like to see, uh, oh, we're installing something, click OK, and then like three hours later, to disinstall, and then suddenly their, their system reboots, and then uh, you get a call or someone gets a call, and it's not a good thing. And it's 10.4 plus friendly. And I know people in education, Works great, uh, and you're not limited to just the latest OSs, which is nice. Uh, we can't all upgrade uh, at the same rate as every other organization. And it's got great documentation. So if you wanna quickly leave your job, just send a message like this. <laughs> It's another good one to get from your users. And you actually, actually, you can port that directly into your database, do all kind of great things. But here are a lot of the options. Some bubble, message box, okay, simple message box. Uh, you could do standard input, security inputs, so if you're asking for passwords, you obviously don't wanna show it in the clear to anybody. Um, progress bars, you could do file saves, file selects, where you actually will search, and actually you select a file and let it do something with that. Uh, very flexible. Here's kind of what some of these look like. So one of the, the things that I'm working on right now is, uh, we, we've done it similar at uh, Genentech as well, is the, the user account provisioning aspect. There's, uh, the larger you get and the more variables, very vari different sites, not, maybe not all the information is in Active Directory, or it is, but you wanna be able to gather all that data and actually do something uh, local on the system that's customized, right? You don't wanna create a bunch of self-service stuff that people will have to go to. Why not just automate that process? So if you are in this region, you get this language pack, and if you're in this, you get that, uh, and it triggered it all on a local scale. So, so I'm working on creating a, uh, a user account setup, which is uh, basically when the system is imaged, provisioned, uh, it will automatically trigger uh, this user account setup uh, by the daemon, so it doesn't require a password. It'll be a non-privileged user as well that's actually 
uh, doing this interaction. Uh, it integrates with the service, a service account in Active Directory so that you can do things like bind to Active Directory. Uh, you can also create the mobile account, get their, uh, their, system, their user account provision and the, the local uh, config set up the way it should be. You can force uh, VPN connections. So using uh, Cocoa Dialog, you can actually show, uh, oh, hey, you're not on the network based on the IP range. You need to, or we can't ping the server that's on the network. You need to connect to a VPN and then have it check, not let them get past that point until they, uh, they are. Uh, and then once they are, then they can do all the AD related things. And you can also plug in Active Directory, do it uh, in AD query once you're connected via VPN. If, if you're a big organization, you have all that data sites, potentially in Active Directory, phone numbers, and what you can grab and scrape that data uh, just with a few simple you know, user interaction boxes, saying what's your user ID and which domain are you part of or which region are you part of, and then you can actually go to the right Active Directory and scrape and get that data back. So yeah, create some mobile account and reboots, uh, and then you then uh, are that user, you sign in. Uh, and this allows for offsite uh, configuration, so if you image the system, you ship it out to someone, they can do self-service uh, creation. You don't have to worry about creating an account or having giving a temporary AD password or whatever. It's all done uh, externally, which is nice. So I'll, sh I'll show you some more examples of Cocoa Dialog in, in some of the other bigger tools, because I actually integrate all kinds of tools these days. Uh, one of those is Terminal Notifier. Who uses this? So with 10.8 Notification Center, uh, it's kind of cool that you can kind of see messages and see history and they just kind of go in the corner and they're not in your face because users don't like things in their face. Uh, so the Terminal Notifier kind of feels like it's seamlessly integrated with your OS. The user doesn't even know that it's you sending a dialog. You can make it seem like Apple sent them a dialog because it's so uh, tightly knit. It's, I call it Ninja Class uh, integration. And it's simple to the point interaction. It doesn't do the crazy stuff Cocoa Dialog does, like, oh, insert your password or, or whatever else. It, what it does is, is great. It actually says, hey, there's a notification. You click on that notification, you can have some sort of event, whether you're taken to a URL, whether you're opening an application, but it gives that control uh, without taking over. And it's rebrandable, it's open source. So uh, Eloy did a great job with this, uh, and you can actually just download the whole project, change the icons around, change the name, call it whatever you want. So it can now be, you know, Auric Notifier and I'm sending that to everybody now, you know? It's kind of it's nice. And as I mentioned, trigger events on a click. Pretty cool. But it's limited 10.8 or later. So that's the not cool part. So what I do is kind of do integration of, of both Terminal Notifier and then Cocoa Dialog for the older OSs just to get a similar user experience uh, and get the same sort of functionality. And some examples. So that's, that, that'd be a good one to send when you go to JNIC, right? <laughs> so we wanted to integrate um, and, and notify our users uh, you know, when their passwords are about to expire. It's our infrastructure at uh, my former job at Genentech and, and Roche was so huge and we had an identity management solution that basically was the place you had to go to to change your password and then it would synchronize to all the different other password stores. So it's kind of like a huge single kind of password controller. Um, and what we wanted to do was integrate and find out when people need to change their passwords and then automatically take them to that URL if, if they're ready. Why not 30 days before start showing them one, once per day hey, your password's gonna expire in 30 days. Oh, it's gonna expire in 29 days. And then they can click and change their password. So that's where this came around. Uh, and this event is uh, triggered by daily inventory. So 
Uh, it will identify based on the last password set uh, on the 80 uh, stored credentials. Uh, and then basically, if, it stays, if it's within the 30 days, it will then uh, notify the user only once per day, which is kind of nice. And then it directs you to the password URL. So if you kind of look at the script, uh, this is just bash. Uh, but you're basically doing the math. You're setting a, what your password policy is. And I'll share, I'll share this with everybody, too, in case you want to integrate with your environment. But you set what your password poly, policy is, whether it's 180 days, 60 days, 30 days. In this case, 365 um, allows you to do the calculations based on that number. Uh, and then uh, we'll actually leverage uh, Terminal notifier, see it's called there, uh, to actually send the message. Show you what it looks like. So this is uh, the command that you would use just to trigger a simple uh, message from Acme password expiration. Your password will expire in so many days. Click to change your password and then open this URL. Looks like that. So it looks like it's seamless with the OS. Uh, it just works, and it's kind of cool, right? You get notified. You don't have to worry about, oh, I come into the office. Things aren't working. <laughs> oh, no, what am I going to do? And you waste half your day. So with the same thing, right, we do have 10.6 systems. People still have 10.6 systems here, 10.7 systems. Uh, so you can't use terminal notifier for everybody, but you can also limit it to the cool new systems with 10.8. So Poker Dialog does something similar. So this is the dialog, and it's the same sort of simple uh, command where you're just calling Poker Dialog, you're calling the message box, one of the 15, 20 different uh, message boxes they have, point to the icon file. So if you, if you rebranded, anyone uh, rebranded self-service? Andrew. <laughs> So if you have your own icon and you rebranded it, call it something different, like at Genetic, we called it G-Install, uh, you can basically rebrand uh, Terminal Notifier so that it actually has the same icon as your tools, and then use that icon for Coco Dialog for the other system. So it seems like your internal app is actually saying, hey, there's something you need to do, and not IT sending you a message through some creepy uh, method because they have control over your system. And this is where things get fun. So is there, does anyone know of any other tools other than Coco Dialog and Terminal Notifier out there that I may have missed? Growl. Growl, yep. But sometimes there's limitations. Like uh, for me, I'm, I'm very big on GUI. I'm, I'm the kind of guy that sits there. I was a web designer. Uh, I, just, I was going to be one. Uh, and then the dot-com thing happened, and I went in IT. <laughs> but uh, I'm all about the user interface, and it's about making it as rich of an experience as possible, right? Making something your own. Um, and the way you do that with, uh, on, the, on the Mac side is by actually going doing some Cocoa development. Um, it takes work, obviously, and, it's, and it's, I, I'm not great. I'm not a great programmer. I'm a UI, UI guy, but I can stumble my way through to do some things. But it allows you to not, you don't have to create programs. You can just create like a framework almost, right? And leverage your bash skills, your Apple script, or whatever you prefer to code in uh, to trigger this thing that does beautiful things. So I'll show you an example of what that looks like. But you kind of need to know some stuff, right? Xcode, and it's kind of scary if you're not into Python or, or yeah, have that knowledge of object-oriented programming. So um, working with uh, Zach Smith on uh, this initially, it was Mac AD Utility, uh, came up with uh, the Please Wait app. So it's basically a Cocoa app uh, that just does things that you want more for status than anything else. Uh, it only, its whole purpose is to monitor three files and what the, the actual uh, values are set to those files, right? And then it uses those values and updates itself 
That's all it does. It's a very simple program. And it makes sure that it's in front. It makes your doc disappear so it's like fully, you know, it's in your face, it's doing something. You should pay attention to this, uh, which you can, you can do uh, with Coco Dialog with the full screen Jamf Helper. You could do that as well. But this one just kind of feels warmer, feels like it's part of the OS. And ignores all the other applications. So if there's any alerts coming with anything else, you won't see it because it's in the front. But the cool thing is you can customize it. So you can brand it. If you do something and you create your own interface, you can throw your company logo on there. Uh, you can, uh, if you're creating a new tool, you can basically put a new icon on there and call it whatever, put a little paragraph, and make it seem like it's something unique. But it looks like this, and that's scary, right? <laughs> And, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll have this uh, source code as well for you guys if you guys want to uh, start with this. Um, but it lets you do things like this. So this is kind of like the framework uh, that the please wait is. Uh, all it is is a shell, has three, three different uh, fields that actually updates. Uh, one is the phase, so if you're doing some sort of task, right, and you're grouping it into blocks, this is what you give the title, like, oh, I am now updating your system's packages to the latest patches. That would be your phase. And then your progress, you could show, hey, I'm actually updating Flash right now from version this to that. And then the pr install progress, you have full controls. You give it a number from 1 to 100, and it will adjust the, uh, the status. So you can do all kinds of cool stuff. If you know how to do uh, bash scripting or Apple script, you could just create a whole bunch of different commands that are doing things and then just say, after this command, make sure you update this field to that, this field to that. And all it is is just a file, just a plist that it's updating. And this is how we used it. So uh, I'll, I'll kind of go over the Mac AD to you kind of what was the, the foundation of this. But I said, hey, I've got this great interface that's rich. Why can't I reuse it on all kinds of things? So mountain lion upgrade. Everyone uh, create, did everyone do a self-service upgrade thing for Mountain Lion? So the, the challenge with, uh, with us uh, is that we were running a tool that was making things complicated, so we couldn't just do an update. We can use uh, Greg Neagle's uh, package and just install it, and it would break the system, and they wouldn't be able to log in. So we had to do a lot of tasks before, uh, install the upgrade and then do some tasks after. So we wanted to create a way that we can have this workflow and uh, give it a, gu a GUI. Uh, here's Greg on the bottom. I wonder what his name is not showing up now. There he is. So if you haven't, uh, if you haven't seen his uh, OS X uh, package creation magic, it's pretty awesome. I used it and it, and it still works on uh, Mavericks, from what I know. And uh, great, great thing that I integrated into this. I let him do that OS work, and I just worried about the things that I needed to fix first before I could upgrade. So with this, simple Apple Script workflow uh, saying, all right, I need to patch this app. I need to upgrade this app to, uh, to mountain lion compatibility. And the biggest thing was we were using a AD, uh, bind, AD tool uh, or plugin that actually uh, when we would upgrade it to the mountain lion version, it would delete your cache. So seeing that we had 3,500 uh, offsite users that are using Max, if they went to self-service, you know, hey, I'm going to upgrade a mountain lion, they start running it. Well, they updated everything to be compatible with mountain lion but now their cache is gone. So what I also integrated was uh, ensuring VPN connection. So what, what this tool did was it said, hey, are you on the network? No. Connect via VPN. When you connect via VPN, it then updates uh, the plugin architecture that wasn't compatible uh, to the new version so that it's compatible with Mountain Lion, but then we lose the cache, but then I recache while they're connected over VPN so that I retain that. Then I update that to the mountain lion version. So there were some things I had to do. It was just really weird. Um, but that was the only way that I could accomplish it was forcing a VPN connection. 
Um, and then, you know, installing Greg Neagle's OS 10 uh, package build, uh, and then doing some post installs. But I wanted to combine this all so it looks and feels like, like it's an application, it's some cool interface. So this is kind of how it worked. So it was an AppleScript app, right? And within the, the bundle there was the, uh, the Cocoa app, which is the please wait app. The AppleScript would actually do the logic of writing to those three P lists that uh, this app keeps reading. And then you can show your status changes on screen in this cool new GUI. Like you can put your company logo, you can create it, customize, make it larger, do whatever you want to make it look pretty. But in the end, all people are seeing is, I started it, they see the progress, it feels like it's actually really doing something, uh, and it looks clean. Uh, at least for me, it looks clean. Is this something you guys would be interested in doing something like this? So basically, it's just setting these properties. So those are the, it's just pointing to uh, private temp. Those files are getting written there. Um, and as soon as any of those are updated, it will go ahead and automatically bring that up and update. And how you actually write to it is basically, this is AppleScript, but it's shell and, and within. So basically, I'm sending 10 as a progress to the progress uh, file with administrator privileges so it writes to it because it's in, you know, <laughs> private temp. Uh, and then it does the same for, it's, I wanted to in, inform the user that we're performing an AC power uh, connection check and basically sending that to install header which is basically uh, now has that value. And then the last one is install status, uh, giving him the real time, what step within this phase am I actually doing or what I've completed. So you can pretty, pretty well do a very good job kind of making it very uh, verbose to the user so you can list exactly what it's doing at any point in time. Uh, but it's not giving separate pop-ups, it's staying within an interface, which is kind of nice. So, I like to integrate all kinds of things now. Uh, I mean, Mac Utility we have in the past at Genentech, uh, which is a way of leveraging the uh, AppleScript, the Cocoa Dialog for some user interaction, as well as Cocoa, like the, uh, the app that I just showed you. But doing some really cool things. Have you guys ever, did I, did I ever speak about Mac Utility before, Tom? Yeah. You guys seen that presentation? So if, just to give a little background, what this tool does is it allows someone who's a local user account to get migrated to an AD user account offsite. So basically, it runs, lets you, uh, you know, put in your credentials, says it's gonna take some time. Uh, it actually will force a VPN connection. Uh, it goes ahead in memory, it deletes your current user account and recreates your account and caches it uh, locally and then does the whole file uh, permissions uh, fixes on top of all your data. So that you can just give a, syst a system with a standard username, password to somebody, and then they can run this tool themselves anywhere around the world, VPN in and be able to configure that system for them. So that was kind of our need that we needed to do, and this kind of allowed for that. So we integrated service accounts to, uh, to be able to uh, do the AD stuff on our side. Um, as well as multi-script workflow. So it was Apple script, but there was like 15, 20 shell scripts that were doing various tasks. So it's kind of more of a framework than anything else. And then Cocoa Dialogs were for the user interactions like, hey, you're not connected via VPN, or hey, you didn't plug in the power. So we want to make sure that those checks were done. Make them very nice, simple, clean, and easy to interact with. But then we also had multiple Cocoa apps. So the one that you saw for the mountain lion upgrade, that was, that was the please wait uh, one. And that was kind of used for just the general progress. But then we created a couple other ones as well. 
So this is what I re-engineered the, uh, you know, what you can get out of uh, the, the initial dialogue for please wait and try to make it look nicer. So now you'll see, you know, no, in red, do not use your computer until this process finished because we were actually deleting your account and doing some crazy stuff in the background. Processing is where the, uh, the you know, here's what state I'm in, what I'm working on, and then on the inside there, you'd, you'd have the text of what exactly am I doing, and then progress. But on top of that, we also leveraged another app that uh, Zach helped us make, uh, which is cleanup. So once we've migrated, created the account and uh, set that user up, and now we're actually doing the data, uh, the, per the permissions fixes, so that it now is owned by this new AD user, because the UID is different completely, right? So you wanna make sure that everything on the system is updated. We wanted to block off the screen so you had no access, right? Because you click on something, things will start showing that you don't have permissions because you don't exist. So this basically leveraged some, uh, some Cocoa commands, built-in frameworks to block it out completely so you can't do anything. Uh, and it grays out your screen with this window saying, hey, we're doing something, you gotta wait. And then another Coco app, which was simply a, hey, you're done, now you can restart. So basically it was killing each of the apps and then going to the new one, killing it and then going to the complete when it's done. Um, and this kind of made it feel like it's this huge, nice process, right? Because it's very clean, integrated with the OS. So that was, uh, that, I don't know how many times we used that tool. Uh, it's changed over, over the years, um, but it's, it was definitely beneficial and allowed us to accomplish uh, getting, getting users migrated to uh, Active Directory when they already had systems offsite. So it was a great opportunity with that. And that's, this is kind of what I wanna like uh, really put into everyone's, in, in, into your minds is that you really, you really won't be appreciated you know, if you don't really expose your skills. Because there's so much that we do uh, in IT to, we do this magic, right? We create cra crazy scripts, we have built-in processes, accenture attributes to do these cool things, but no one knows, you know? Uh, and if you do have to give a pop-up or you do have to migrate someone from 10A to Mavericks, why not make the interaction awesome? So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, people will think about that and people will actually uh, tie that to you and it's gonna help you in, in your organizations as well. So I kind of wanted to open up uh, to Q&A for any questions or even, even some suggestions on what you've done. Yeah, I, I, I can't say what it is that Salesforce is, I'm still new. I'm kind of figuring that out right now. Uh, but at my or, or organization, uh, we did have a process where it's fully tested. So uh, we would build and then we'd have a QA group. You'd give them requirements, here's what it's supposed to do. And then they would test it on all platforms uh, and then give our results back uh, and then pass fail kind of thing uh, to ensure that things worked in those weird scenarios as well. Does the Mac AD utility consider if the local account has the same short name as the AD account? So does it put? So what, what, it, it, what it does, it does, because uh, the challenge was when we were rolling this out was that not every account was created with the, the username of their AD user. So it does do that. It will migrate to the appropriate name automatically. Uh, yes, they are admins, um, but I had hooks. If they kill the pop-ups, it would still reboot the system, so it was still happening. <laughs> so there, there's, there's ways you can still control it, but yeah, it's just like any app. Uh, it, when the app is running, uh, it doesn't show up. Uh, even if you do uh, control alt or not control alt delete, but the uh, force quit on the Mac, uh, it won't show up in the list. You would have to actually kill the process via command line. So it's, it's kind of controlled in the sense where they don't have that access to it.
Hi. Um, your Apple script that actually allowed you to mount shares, um, oh. does it only work with keychains or can you work with Kerberos Realms as well? Uh, that one only works with keychains, but I'm sure you can uh, make it work. Thank you. Yeah. I think there's a question up, up there as well. You have to go up the stairs, man. Great question. What was it? Oh, sure. Um, one of the tools that I've had um, success with is Platypus. I don't know if anyone's used that, oh, yeah. but I don't know. I didn't see that mentioned, and so. Um, yeah, Platypus is good to. It's a quick way to create like a little app that does yeah. something. Okay. I just wanted to mention that. People use Platypus here as well. I know Andrew does. <laughs> cool. What's that? Platypus? Yeah. Uh, so Platypus is uh, is basically uh, an app that lets you uh, drag a script or create tasks like where you can make a dra uh, droppable application. So for example, let's say I wanted to be able to convert a file size or something from from one to something else, and I can just put a script. But that is actually wrapped with Platypus, the app, which then I can make it market so it could be a droppable or something like that. So I can drop the image on top of it, and it would just run the script and apply whatever I had. Uh, but you can also use a shell script and just have it give you on screen like progress. Uh, it, it's uh, Andrew, do you have a better description? Did you love it so much? You have to wait. <laughs> yeah, uh, Platypus essentially you, does have some, some built-in dialogue and functionality. Um, its real strength uh, where I use it is it can take just about any scripting language that there is and convert that into a double-clickable Coca app of, as far as any user is concerned. You can also uh, have the, the the script that you've used to be encrypted as part of the binary, so it's not as easily accessed. Um, and if you couple that with uh, Coco Dialog or some of the other things, you, you at the end of the day, as far as users know, you have a fully developed Coca app with absolutely no experience in creating it in Coca. Thank you. You can also do the rebranding in Platypus too to make it look like an in-house app. Um, with Mac AD Util, is that available up on GitHub or anywhere else? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> Could it be? But I I can probably discuss that with you. Okay. Yeah, I can I can share a lot of the. I actually have a problem that that sounds like that would help solve. So, uh, if possible, I'd like to see if I could take a look at it. For sure. Yeah, throw money at me and anything's possible. It's <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Uh, there, there should be a uh, discussion topic on Jamf Nation on the session, and so we could post example code there later. Sure. And, no, you, can, no, I... and you can attach documents from your presentation. So uh, afterward, just hit up the uh, discussion on, on Rx uh, session here on Jamf Nation. So the, uh, the, the three Cocoa apps for the notifications, I will have the, the source code available uh, posted by the end of the week. So if you guys want to dive in and take a look at that, uh, it's pretty easy to use. I mean. It's simple, and you can actually just go, if, you, if you're not a developer, you can actually just uh, open up the nib and modify things and put your own logos and just recompile it, and then it works the same way. Uh, so it's, it's quick, quick and easy. Uh, to respond to Rich's question about uh, the Mac AD utility, I think Zach has something similar on Git, GitHub. Um, it's called Winnebago. I've yeah, used cause, it. Yeah, because we worked on Mac AD together, and right. I, I think he's probably improved it. It's, it's on GitHub, so. Any other questions? So, uh, so I guess more to that point, um, the challenges you had with directory services, was that by any chance a third party AD, AD connector, such yeah. as, can we mention, or? Centrify or not? 
Could be that. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just curious. Okay. We can talk offline. I'll tell you a lot of stories. Anything else? So who's going to do more uh, UI now? Sweet. Love it. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it.